أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد أشرف المرسلين وعلى صحبه أجمعين ومن اتبع لسنته لا يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها الإخوة والأخوات السلام عليكم brothers and sisters I greet you with the greeting of Islam which is to say may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you after that we invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he may send peace and blessings upon his messenger and upon the Messenger's companions, and upon the family of the Messenger, and upon all those who follow the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's guidance until the Day of Judgment. Amma Ba'd, after that, so to continue, now as to what proceeds, we continue with our lessons of Muqtasar Al-Akhdari, of Imam Al-Akhdari, of the Rahman Al-Akhdari, the abridgment of Imam Al-Akhdari, and moral purification and prayer. In the last section, we covered the Fasl of Tayammum, the section on Tayammum, which is a Tayammum is a replacement for what a person for several different reasons, cannot use water due to not being able to find find it, due to being sick or fearing that his sickness will be exacerbated, or due to the fact that he has a shortage of water so that if he uses the water that he has for wudu, it would uh, dissipate his capacity to carry out his normal day-to-day affairs. Or if the the time of uh, or if the time of the of the of the prayer is about to leave before he can finish making wudu. In all those cases, the person he does tayammum. And he gave us the various rulings about it with respect to who can perform tayammum for a fard salah, who can perform it for a nawafil, uh, what it is that you can attach to a prayer that you perform with uh, tayammum with respect to reading the Quran, performing tawaf, performing nawafil, and things of that sort. Inshallah, today he gets into another section. Uh, it's two sections, but we'll combine them because the second one is short and the second one is, is attached to the first. They share the same ruling effectively. It says, Faslun fil hayd. Says this is a se- the section on menstruation. The section on menstruation. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the in, in the Quran, they ask you about menstruation. Tell them that it's an impurity. Says so that when the women are on their imp- in, in, on their menstruation cycle, don't approach them. Meaning don't approach them sexually. And once they've become pure, meaning once the menstruation has ended, and once they've purified themselves, then you can approach them sexually. And that's when they can. That's what they, That's when they can uh, perform their prayers and perform their different acts of worship. So the menstruation is a condition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed biologically upon women uh, and it prevents them from being able to pray, not because they're filthy, not because they're dirty, but because it's, uh, it, it prevents them from tahara. Tahara is uh, attaining a certain spiritual purity that you need in order to pray salah, which we, you need to do through wudu or most other things of that nature. Once the menstruation ends, the, then that woman, she's no longer in the, in, she's no longer in uh, a state of hayd, but it leaves a state of janaba, uh, a state of ritual impurity that she has to renew, remove from herself. So in order to remove that from herself, uh, she would have to perform ghusl. Once she performs ghusl, she can perform prayer again. Now, uh, fasting though is a different story. If you wake up, for example, having finished your menstrual cycle as a woman, uh, but you haven't performed ghusl, you can still make the intention to fast the next day. Fasting is not contingent on being in a state of, like, fasting is not contingent on being in a state of, uh, of ritual purity. Now, قال رسول الله, أستغلق, excuse me, قال الإمام الأخدري, says, فصل في الحي, this is the section on purity, he says, والنساء مبتدعة ومعتادة وحامل, he says, women with respect to their period are of three categories. مبتدعة, مبتدعة is the woman that, the girl that is seeing her period for the first time. So she doesn't know how long her pers- her particular period is supposed to last. He says, and the woman that's experienced, meaning she's uh, she's accustomed to seeing her period. And the, and the pregnant woman. It's rare for women that are pregnant to, to have periods, but it does happen. You understand? So they each have their own a set of rulings with respect to the length of, of, of their periods. He says, He says, uh, 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 he says the the maximum period for an, a, a girl that is having her period for the first time خمسةَ uh, عشرة يومن is is fifteen days. So what what he means by the maximum period is that after that period of time, once three days is added to that, we consider it. Uh, we well, after that mass after that period of time. We consider it istihada, we consider it false false blood. Because sometimes some women have a vein that produces a lot of blood and it's different from menstruation. It gets activated during the menstrual cycle such that the woman, even after the menstrual cycle continues, 
it's still it's still the blood still flows but it's not menstrual blood it's uh it's actual blood you understand it says the the maximum period of time for a woman that's having her first period of time, her first period is 15 days he says well and for the woman that is experienced that is uh that has uh that has been having periods for a while uh added to her her period is her normal period so for for some some women it's three days some women it's four days some women it's seven days it's different depending on the woman but um if the if the if the if the if the if the blood the menstrual uh, blood it goes beyond her normal period he said zadat thalathat that zadat thalathat then she adds 3 days to it to see whether this is just a continuation of her menstrual cycle and such that the next date is going to be for example say her menstrual cycle is 7 days normally so the seventh day ends and she's still bleeding so she waits for an eighth day a ninth day and a tenth day and then after that, she anything that happens after that, she would consider it istihada. She would consider it false blood. You understand? But if it stops before that, say it stops at nine days, then her new period is, is nine days. He says, ma lam tujawiz yom. And so long as that extension doesn't go beyond 15 days, right? So, for example, you know, her normal time of her normal period is 13 days. Right, so she adds one day, two day, it becomes fifteen days. Then she would consider anything that comes after that false blood. And in the case of false blood, what you need to do is you need to make wudu. You need to do ghusl and pray like normal. She considers it that it's not menstruation. Now, he says, "Walil hamili ba'da thalathati ashur." He says, "For the pregnant woman, after three months, her period خمسة عشر يوما is fifteen days ونحو ونحوها or the likes of that, like twenty days." So the, the the maximum length of time for a woman on her on her to have her period, uh, to have a period last for if she's pregnant after her third month of period, uh, of third month of pregnancy is twenty days. He says, "Well, by the sixth day, Ashurin, after her sixth month of pregnancy, Ashuruna wa Nahuha, then it's like twenty days, twenty to thirty days is the maximum. You understand? So you go with the upper limit is thirty days. You understand? He says, "For in taqta adamu lafqat ayamhu hatta." To he says, if the blood stops short of the of the of the of the of the normal amount of time that it takes for her period to end, lafqat uh, she adds up her days, hatta to kamil until her period until her period ends. Excuse me, until her her normal amount of uh, amount of days is completed. You understand? So she's a pregnant woman. It's after three months, and then it's uh, and normally say she's she's gonna she's gonna uh, she's gonna she she bleeds for seven days, you know. After six days, it stops, and then it comes back on the eighth day. So then she adds another day. So then that becomes seven days, and then she would add up the days. If there's three more days, anything like that, she she could consider it false blood. You understand? So if the peer, if the blood cuts off intermittently below what is the normal amount of time for that woman to to uh, for, below the normal amount of, of time for that woman to to uh, for her period, then she would add up the days until the amount is is reached. He says, He says, He says, He says, not permissible for the woman that is uh, that is uh, that is menstruating. Salat is not it's not permissible for her to pray salah in any sense. She can make dua but she can't pray salah. Wala sawmun, she doesn't fast as well. Wala tawafun, she doesn't circumambulate around the Kaaba, meaning tawaf. Wala masu mushafin, she doesn't touch the Quran as a copy of the Quran. Wala duhulu masjid and she doesn't enter the masjid as well. Wa aliha qada'u sawm, she has to make up any missed days of fasting that she does, that she missed on her period. So if her if her fasting if her period occurs during the month of Ramadan, and it happens that she misses, say, seven days, then when her period is over after the month of Ramadan, before the next Ramadan, she has to make up those days as well. Do not salah, but not salah. The prayers that you miss while you're while you're menstruating, you don't have to make that up. وَقِرَاءَتُهَا جَائِزَةٌ It's permissible for her to recite the Qur'an from memory, especially if she's a student of knowledge, because if she was to be prevented from reciting the Qur'an, in every instance where she has a period, then she would lose the knowledge of the Quran. So it's permissible for her to recite the Quran from memory. But she can't touch the Musaf, she can't touch a copy of the Quran. 
ولا يحل لزوجها فرجها it's not permissible for her husband to uh, to enjoy himself through her private parts basically you understand so she can't have intercourse with her uh, she she can't have intercourse with her with her husband while he is in a, while she's in a state of 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 uh, of, of hide and menstruation wala ma bayna surratiha wa rukbati wa rukbatiha and it's not permissible for him to enjoy what is between her knees her belly button and her and her knees as far as like pleasing himself hatta uh, taghtasil until she makes a ghusl after she's become pure you understand so effectively what he's saying is that even when a woman comes off her period it doesn't mean that the man can automatically have intercourse with her she has to first purify herself to tahar you understand the woman they tah they become tatahar i should say they become tatahar is when they when the woman uh when the woman becomes pure tatahar is when the woman uh purifies herself by making ghusl so the husband can't approach her sexually until she purifies herself from ghusl through ghusl i should say this first one fin nifas is this the section on menstruation uh, excuse me on post uh, postpartum bleeding so in hayd is menstruation and then nifas is the bleeding that comes after a woman uh, after a woman gives birth he says when nifas is kal hayd he says that uh, the nifas the postpartum bleeding kal hayd is in, is this has the same ruling as menstruation fi mani'ahi as far as the things that it prevents a woman from doing so the same thing when it comes to what the woman is not able to do as far as praying fasting circum ambulating touching the quran uh, or entering the masjid the uh, nifas that also does those same things he says what well, who sit to the yawman he says the maximum amount of time for a woman to experience postpartum bleeding is 60 days so when we do go over for either for either and qata ad qablaha if her blood if the blood stops if her nifas stops before then before the 60 days walaw fi yawm al wilada even if it happens to be in the day that she gives birth ikhtasalat she makes she does ghusl was sallat and she prays meaning that she's no longer in a state of hayd she doesn't have to uh like add three days or look for it you know that's in the case of menstruation he says fa idha awadaha fa idha awadaha dam eh he says uh He says, "Faida." He says, "Faida." I would have a dam. If the blood returns, if in kind of bein huma, and there happens to be between the first, the, the end of the first bleeding period, خمسة عشر يوم خمسة عشر يوما, fifteen days. فأكثر كان الثاني فأكثر كان الثاني حيدا. You understand? Then effectively, she considers the second the second bleeding. She considers as as a period. So if she has say she's born on a Tuesday or she's born on day one, she has postpartum bleeding for three days. It stops. She makes ghusl, she prays fast, whatever the case might be, and then the blood returns after seven days. Then that's still considered a, a hayd, and then she would add those days up until it gets to six months it gets into uh, 60 days three three uh 60 days which is uh two months right but if she bleeds on on three on the third day and she stops bleeding on the third day i should say and then uh 15 days goes by and then she bleeds again that second bleeding she considers it as, as menstruation she doesn't consider it as postpartum bleeding he says what illa what he, he says what illa dumma he says, as I explained to you, إِلَّا دُمَّ إِلَى الْأَوَّلِ وَكَانَ مِنْ تَمَامِ النَّفَاسِ And if it's less than 15 days, she adds it to the bleeding of the first, the counting, the counting of the first, وَكَانَ مِنْ تَمَامِ النَّفَاسِ And it, 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 it serves to complete the days that she has to, the, the days up until the, the, the 60 days effectively. You understand? So, inshallah, we'll review once again. Uh, this is beneficial for the women. It's beneficial for the men as well, so they know, because sometimes these things that we don't really pay too much attention to it. It says, When Nisa'u Mutada'atun wa Mu'atadatun 
what have you. He says the women, Fasl fil Hayd, he says the section of menstruation, when Nisa'u Muqtada'atun, wa Muqtada'atun, what have you. The women, they're beginners when it comes to period, meaning they're having their first period, wa Muqtada'atun, or their experience, meaning that they're used to seeing their period, wa Hayyun, or they're pregnant and they're having a period. Wa Akhthalun Hayd, and the maximum period of time for menstruation, lil Muqtada'atun, for a beginner woman, Khamsada Ashara Yawman is 15 days. Walil Mu'atadati added to her, and for an experienced woman, it's her normal period of time that she's used to seeing her period come in that many days. So in Tamada Biha ad Dammu, if the blood goes past that amount of days for the experienced woman, Zadat Thalathat Ayyamin, she adds three days in which she wait she waits. Istizahar, which is not Istizahar, is just to wait and see, basically. She's a wait and see period. So long as that the addition of that three days doesn't cross 15 days. Whatever is after 15 days, she considers that as, as a, she considers that as false blood. For the pregnant woman, after three months, and she, she experiences postpartum, she experiences Haid, her, her period is 15 days or like, Days. And after, after, uh, after six months, her period is Ashuruna uh, is 20 days, when the whole likes of it 30 days. If the blood cuts off intermittently, meaning below that maximum period of time and below her normal period of time, it cuts off and then it comes back on. She adds up the days as they, even though they're like broken apart by a few days. Uh, until her normal period time is completed. He says, It's not permissible for the woman that's menstruating, salatun, that she's, the first salat is not permissible for her. Fasting is not permissible for her. Circumambulating around the Kaaba is not permissible for her. Uh, where was I here? And teaching and touching the Quran is also not permissible for her. Entering the masjid is not permissible for her as well. Uh, although some scholars, they allow the last two because for a girl that's studying the Qur'an because of the fact that the study of the Qur'an is very important. And upon her is that she has to make up any days of fast that she misses while she wrote her period of the month of Ramadan. He says, Duna salah, but not the prayers that she missed. It's permissible for her to read the Qur'an without touching the, the Musaf itself. It's not permissible, or her husband is not is not obliged access. He's not allowed to have access to farjuha, her private parts. What's between her her navel and her and her knees? Uh, he's not allowed to enjoy himself of that until she performs ghusl after her period is done. But he can kiss her. They can hug. They can do all the things that you know intimate women, uh, husband and wife are allowed to do, except. That part is off limits. When nifasu kal hayd fi fasl fi nifas, and he says that's the section on postpartum bleeding. He says when nifasu kal hayd, he says nifas, uh, postpartum bleeding kal hayd is just like it's just like uh, menstruation fi manahi, as far as what it prevents a person from doing. Wa aktharu situl yoman, and its maximum period is sixty days. For ida in qata al damu qablaha, if the blood stops any time before that. Even if it's on the day of the child's birth, uh, he makes the woman makes ghusl was salat and she prays, meaning her she's back into a state of tahara. If the if the if the period if the menstrual excuse me if the menstrual blood returns, if the menstrual blood if the menstrual blood return excuse me if the postpartum blood returns back to her. And there is at least 15 days between the end of her first bleeding period and the start of this new bleeding period. Says so then the second one is 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 considered as uh, as menstrual blood. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa